Making your Jeep unique is one of the simple reasons why we love Jeeps in the first place. From simple pinstriping to trail battle scars, a Jeep can be built to represent your personality and individuality. Jeep accessories and aftermarket parts go hand in hand with the Jeep way of life. Let's discuss Jeep Wrangler's customization today. Before we start, welcome back to Rolling on Wheels. In every video, we always bring something more enjoyable for you. So if you want to be part of the vast entertainment world, make sure to hit the subscription button and turn on notifications by clicking on the bell icon. Customizing is synonymous with owning a Jeep. There are thousands of companies that not only exist but flourish because of the culture encompassing Jeep customization. As a result of the customizing culture around Jeeps, they have become known as the Lego truck. Each piece on a Wrangler can be bought in its OEM frame or in aftermarket spec from some third-party dealer. This is typically what makes Jeeps so amazing and valuable. Well, all that will be changing soon. Jeep is planning to offer in-house customizing from the factory. But what will the Jeep Custom House look like? Jeep is contributing $23 million into building an on-site customizing house for factory Jeeps. Jeep says they are planning to create 300 new jobs for the unused facility. Whereas this can be exciting news for many, the aftermarket shops and suppliers are likely sweating up a storm to see if individuals will lean toward their shocks, tires, and aux lights from the third-party people or the factory. The facility will repurpose the old textile vinyl factory close to Jeep's main factory in Toledo, Ohio. After the location was deserted in 2013, the property was seen as useless. The factory laid off hundreds of individuals after it closed. Jeep was permitted to purchase the property for only $1 and is planning on contracting several hundred, which must come as a help for the workers in the area. The facility will be run by a supplier who is yet to be named. Many believe Mopar might be the strange partner. So, what will the new Jeep Custom House provide? Future factory custom alternatives might incorporate custom wheels, tires, lighting, running boards, and even custom logos and paint schemes. But, of course, the most focus for the custom Jeeps will be for customers to order a purpose-built off-roader from the factory. Jeep currently offers option bundles just like the Rubicon with bigger tires, higher ground clearance, and specialty driving modes. But that's not what a genuine custom Jeep is about. Instead, people spend a long time building their custom Jeeps piece by piece. We will have to wait and see if the custom factory is able to feel personal. People construct custom Jeeps to be more competent. Sure, but the genuine reason is people need to feel the pride and possession of their ride, looking and feeling like no one else's. I had a Wrangler for a long time and adored each new piece I put on it because no one else would have the same set of parts. I know there's more to Jeep than just the Wrangler and the Gladiator, but the truth is, these two models will be at the heart of this facility. The Wrangler and Gladiator are far and away from the foremost customized vehicles Jeep sells, if not the foremost commonly customized vehicles, period. In any case, that's not to say that Jeep wouldn't joyfully let you purchase a customized Renegade or Grand Wagoneer. You've probably heard of Ferrari TaylorMade and other programs like it where planned proprietors go to create their already extraordinary cars, even more so, creating one-of-a-kind manifestations with special details and special paint plans. It looks like Jeep is working on its form of the concept. How do we know? According to the Toledo Edge, the city of Toledo will sell FCA a plot of land a few miles from Jeep's assembly plant there, where the Wrangler and Combatant are being built right now. How much did it cost? A measly $1 is an incentive for FCA's speculation in the community. FCA, in turn, plans to construct a 250,000 square foot facility that will be worked by an obscure supplier and will utilize more than 300 people. Hold on! Please click the subscribe button and click the notification bell to get more updated videos. And if we missed something important so far, let us know in the comment below. Now, back to our topic. Wrangler Jeeps are sold in over 105 countries, with 204,269 Jeep Wranglers sold through October 2018. The Wrangler is enjoying its best sales year ever, surpassing the record it set back in 2015. So Jeep brought us out to see exactly where the Wrangler comes from. And even though we didn't get a tour of the entire plant, we did see some of the key areas where the Wrangler is brought to life. 
You can see its battery self-guided carts, or AGVs as they are called by Jeep. They are bringing fully assembled chassis Xs to the end of the line. While over to the right, you can see that the raw chassis Czar is just beginning assembly. Each one of the AGVs can travel at up to 120 feet per minute, and they all have a stopping accuracy within 0.25 inches. Each AGV can carry up to 3,500 pounds. Now, the entire idea behind Toledo North is to present each part and process to the employees in the most ergonomically friendly way possible. To make sure you're paying attention, how many two-door Wrangler models can you spot in this video? Now, Jeep says that the sales split between four-door and two-door is about 80-20 these days. So, there aren't many two-door models out there that have the windshields installed. Only one worker must place the windshields onto the conveyor, and then the robots take over. The robot lays down a bead of urethane that will be used to bond the window to its frame. The Wrangler is a convertible and off-road machine that means special attention must be paid to the underside and the roof. This big skillet can rotate the Jeeps 90 degrees to ensure everything is easily accessible from the bottom and the top of the Wrangler. This is as much as Jeep wanted to show us. So first of all, thanks to Jeep for letting us into the plant. And I want to take a second to say that being inside a manufacturing plant of this size is remarkable. All the moving parts just come together in such beautiful harmony, and it's incredible to watch all of these intricate little details be taken care of so well. In trade, for the amazingly low sale cost of the land, the City of Toledo plans to authorize tax increase financing, TIF, for the property before the sale goes through. That will permit the city to contribute the expanded property tax revenue to fund other ventures and pay off the bond it took out to buy the disused land in the first place. The city spent $6.8 million buying the land, demolishing the buildings that sat on it, and doing the environmental cleanup, which is $6,799,999 more than Jeep is paying for the same plot. Toledo's Commissioner of Financial Development said that with the assistance of the TIF, the city should recoup those costs after 12 years. This jargon may all appear boring, but that recovery is important for the residents of Toledo and for the city itself. While the deal for the land doesn't fundamentally ensure that a Jeep customization facility will happen or even which vehicles it might cover, we know for sure that if it does come to fulfillment, we'll see it within the next four years. Jeeps already appreciate broad aftermarket support to say nothing of Mopar's extensive line of dealer available hop-up parts and accessories. So. It comes as no surprise that FCA wants a greater piece of that pie and even more cash from Jeepers keen on individualizing their rides from the factory. The big question is, will the factory take over the smaller aftermarket vendors? I know I would hate to see that, and I'd bet most of the Jeep community would agree. The smaller vendors will have parts by brands that Jeep wouldn't carry, ideally keeping their corner of the market. I'm sure there is a bounty for folks who would appreciate the ease and peace of mind that comes with ordering custom stuff from the factory, and it all falling under guarantee. I get it. If we don't start seeing old CJ graphics packages like the Golden Eagles and Laredo, Jeep will hear from me. We're at the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to hear something more interesting from us, add your thoughts in the comments below. Before wrapping up, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to Rolling On Wheels for watching more entertaining content in the future. Have fun!